Okay, today we're going to start a new unit, and the unit is just on a circle. So at the top of the page, we have some vocabulary with the diagram to the right. The first bullet says, the interior of a circle is the set of all points blank the circle. Well, the interior of a circle is all of the points inside the circle. Point blank is in the interior of a circle. Well, we have obviously point C. We name a center based on, or we name a circle rather, based on the center of the circle. So this would be circle C. Okay, so I'm not going to use the center point as a point in the interior. I'm going to use the other point that's inside, which is point X. The exterior of a circle is all of the points outside of the circle. So in our picture, these letters here, so for instance, letter L and letter T, those are the names of the lines, okay? Point A is on the circle, as well as point E and D. So the point that's in the exterior of the circle is point Y. We have a variety of segments in a circle. The first bullet, a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So that would be line segment DE. If the endpoints are on the circle, that segment is called a chord. The lines that intersect a circle. So if we look at the circle to the right, we have a line, line T, which intersects the circle at one point, and we have line L that intersects or touches the circle in two points. So a line that intersects the circle at two points to the right, that's line L, that line is called a secant. S-E-C-A-N-T. I did not fill in the blank for the chord as we talked about. That was line segment D-E. A line that intersects the circle in exactly one point, so that would be line L, that's called a tangent line. The name of the point where the tangent line and the circle intersect, so that point where the tangent line touches the circle, so that would be right here at A, that is called the point of tangency. The first theorem, which will be on your um, study card, that has all the theorems of the unit, and there are a lot, is a tangent line intersecting a circle. So you can see our tangent line AB touches circle O. So you can write the word circle, but, or you can make the symbol, so the circle with the center in the, minor, in the middle. This is circle O. AB is our tangent line, okay? OK is a radius, okay? So I'm going to make note off to the side again. We have AB in segment OK. AB is a tangent, and OK is a radius. When a tangent and radius meet, if you look at the symbol, that symbol means perpendicular. So the first bullet, a tangent line is perpendicular. To the radius, drawn to the point of tangency. So the point of tangency is K, so they intersect and we have a 90 degree angle here. The second bullet, 
a line that is perpendicular to the radius, so if they just tell you it's perpendicular, then we know it's going to be a tangent line. And the next theorem is if two segments are tangent to a circle from the same external point, then the segments are congruent. So if we look to the diagram to the right, we have external point P. P is outside of circle O. So we can name it circle O. So P is in the exterior, and it says that if they're drawn to the circle so that they're tangent, meaning they only touch the circle once, so PA touches the circle at A, that's a point of tangency, and PB touches the circle once, B is a point of tangency, they can keep going, okay? You can look at it that way. So, um, then I know that the distance, though, from A to P, so I'm going to get rid of those dotted lines, the segments themselves, so the distance from P to A, is congruent to P to B. And that's stated below. So let's say if AP was 20 centimeters, then B to P would also be 20 centimeters. So congruent segments have the same length. So these are the only two theorems that we're going to focus on for day one, is that a tangent is perpendicular to a radius, and two tangents drawn to a circle from the same external point are congruent. So let's look at some examples or practice. It says that segment DE and segment DF are tangent to circle C. Notice our center changed. We name a circle based on the center. Find the length DF. Well, since both of these segments are drawn to the circle and only touch it once, and they're both coming from the same external point, we know they are congruent. And if segments are congruent, we set their measures equal. So the measure of DF, which is 3Y, is equal to the measure of DE, which is 5Y minus 28. Solve the equation for y, so I'm going to subtract 5y, and we get negative 2y equals negative 28. Divide by negative 2, and y is 14. Now, it didn't say find the value of y, the question said find the value of df. So df is represented by 3 times y, so 3 times 14, we have a length for df of 42. There is no unit, so we don't need to include a unit of measurement. Number two, we have circle O, as you can see the center is O, is inscribed in a triangle. So that means if it's inscribed, it's inside the triangle. As you can see below, it is. So that the circle is tangent to A, B at F. So that means the circle touches side A, B once. Tangent means it's going to touch once. It is tangent to B, C. So it touches the circle once at E. And tangent to A, C. So it touches A, C once at D. If A to F, the length of A, F is equal to length F, B. So AF equals length FB, and they're both 5, and we know DC is 7. Find the perimeter of the triangle. So if I look at the first external point, A. So from A to F, that would be the same as A to D because they're both segments to the circle and only touches the circle once from the same external point A. So if AF is 5, AD is 5. From external point C to that point where it touches the circle once, if C to D is 7, that means from C also to the circle to E 
is 7. And then last, if b to f is 5, then b to e is also 5. So our perimeter, this whole side, 5 plus 5 is 10. This whole side, uh, 7 plus 5 is 12. And then this whole side, 7 plus 5 is 12. The perimeter of the triangle, we would add all three side lengths. So it would be 12 plus 12 plus 10. Well, 12 plus 12 is 24. And 24 plus 10 gives, up, gives us a perimeter of 34. And since no unit was given in the problem, we don't have to provide a unit of measurement in our answer. Okay, last question. It says that line BA is tangent to circle O at A. So here's line AB, and it touches circle O at A. And if it's a tangent, any segment drawn from the center of the circle to the outside is a radius. So right here where that tangent and radius meet, that's a 90 degree angle. Because a tangent is perpendicular to a radius. It says that both um, OA and OC are radii. And OC is extended to intersect BA at B. So we go past, here's our radius. We're going to extend it to intersect B to form a triangle right here. And since we know we have a tangent line and we have a right angle, we now have a right triangle. It says that if length BA is 15, so this side of the triangle leg is 15, OB, which is our hypotenuse, is 17. Find the measure of radius, uh, A radius, so that could be OC or OA, and since OA is a radius that's the side of my triangle, I'm going to find radius OA, and I'm going to call that X. And in a right triangle, to find a missing side, we use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be x squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. As the Pythagorean theorem is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So now we have x squared plus 15 times 15 is 225. And 17 times 17 is 289. Subtract the 225 first to isolate the x squared. And we get x squared equals 64. Now to undo the square, we take the square root. And 64 is a perfect square, so the square root of 64 is 8. So a radius of a circle, okay, we just found radius OA is 8. So a radius is equal to 8.